Jackson Pollock was an abstract artist during the 1930s through the 1950s. His work introduced new painting techniques and spread the movement of expressionist art. Jackson Pollock was born in 1912 in Cody, Wyoming to Stella Mae McClure and Lee Roy Pollock. In 1930, without graduating high school, Pollock moved to New York with his brother Charles. He spent most of his life in New York and moved there permanently in 1934. Pollock began painting as a result of his lifelong alcoholism. He went to therapy for it and his therapist urged him to sketch in order to cope with it. He entered treatment in 1937, 1938, and again in 1939. However, it was the worst during the 1940s and 50s, which is when his career began to take off. In 1943, Peggy Guggenheim invited him to submit a collage for her gallery and issued him a one-year contract, guaranteeing him $150 a month so that he could spend most of his time painting. Then, later that year, she gave him a one-man show at her gallery, Guggenheim's Art of This Century in New York. This is when Pollock's career began to flourish. During this time, he also painted his first wall-sized work, called Mural. Peggy Guggenheim commissioned him to create this piece as the entrance to her mansion. This painting represents his breakthrough into a totally personal style. Pollock's evolution as an artist from this point forward shows a struggle to find a style that could translate his entire personality into painting. Pollock's paintings became very popular because he used unconventional materials and techniques to create them. He often laid his canvas on the floor, walking around and painting from all four sides. People became quite intrigued by his techniques because they had never been seen before. He used materials like sticks and sand to create his paintings. He also rarely gave his paintings names because he wanted the viewer to interpret the art for themselves. Pollock once said, Abstract painting is abstract. It confronts you. There was a reviewer a while back who wrote that my pictures didn't have any beginning or any end. He didn't mean it as a compliment, but it was. Pollock also had little regard for traditional painting standards or rules. His paintings tended to be very busy and had no particular focal point. Many other artists were inspired by his style and began to paint similar to him. It was because of this that the movement of expressionist art spread so quickly. Pollock's most famous paintings were made during the drip period, during the late 1940s. Suddenly, at the peak of his fame, he abandoned the drip style abruptly. In 1941, Pollock met Lee Krasner at an art exhibit in New York City. They became constant companions and got married in October of 1945. Although Pollock was considered to be one of the most famous painters in America during his time, he did not benefit financially from his fame. He was never paid more than $10,000 for a painting. However, with the financial security provided by Peggy Guggenheim's contract, Pollock didn't have to worry about money and entered the most creative period of his life in the late 1940s. It was during this time that some of his most famous paintings were created. In 1951, Pollock abruptly stopped using color in his paintings as his alcoholism worsened. Thanks to Pollock's close friend Alfonso Osorio, Paul Fichetti, a gallery owner, was able to produce the first exhibit of Jackson Pollock's artworks in his studio on March 7, 1952. In 1956, Pollock stopped painting altogether. In August of that year, Pollock died in a car accident while driving under the influence. Before the era of expressionist art and abstract art in general, paintings occupied a clearly defined space and purpose. After Pollock and so many others began to paint the way they wanted, art was changed forever. Before the 1940s, abstract art was considered to be meaningless. Pollock helped to normalize abstract art and spread the movement of abstract expressionism. Pollock is best known for his action paintings and abstract expressionist works. During his lifetime, he was constantly taking risks and experimenting, and he greatly influenced the avant-garde movements that succeeded him. Artists that were influenced by his works include Jonas Fish, Liz Barber, David Frederick Musalem, and so many more. Jackson Pollock inspired so many artists even after he died. However, Pollock was inspired by many artists that came before him as well. He admired artists like Picasso, Miro, Sequeiros, and the Surrealists. Sequeiros was a muralist from Mexico and the first person to introduce him to the use of liquid paint, inspiring many of his paintings. Pollock was also introduced to Indian sand paintings in 1940, which inspired him to use the medium in his own work. Automatism, the avoidance of conscious intention in producing works of art, inspired him to create many of his paintings too. Pollock also used many different mediums to create his art. 
He often used materials like charcoal, sand, sticks, or paint. Today, his art is displayed at the Museum of Modern Art, the National Gallery of Art, the Art Institute of Chicago, and many more. Some of his most famous paintings include Number 1, Lavender Mist, Convergence, Number 31, and Mural. After his death in 1956, he was given a memorial retrospective exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. He was then given a larger, more comprehensive exhibit there in 1967. More recently, his work was honored with large-scale retrospective exhibitions at the Museum of Modern Art and the Tate in London. Although Jackson Pollock is not alive today, his work will forever have an impact on the art community.